The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, April 3rd, and uh, once again, we're meeting on a Thursday to discuss all of the, rel uh, the upcoming changes or the changes that have occurred over the last week uh, regarding the PPACA law. So um, I do have some information to share with you about this enrollment extension. Obviously, we all know that on 331, which was Monday, um, the, the exchange and off-exchange enrollment for this year shut down. Um, there was, as we, we anticipated, a bit of an extension. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time this morning talking about exactly what that means. For on-exchange enrollment, the extension is going to run until 4.15 or sometime in mid-April, and that really depends on who you talk with. But if you have enrollees that were late in enrolling, um, don't wait till the 15th. Just try to get them in as quickly as possible. Um, because eventually it will cut off, at least that's what we anticipate. Um, so for anyone that is going to enroll on the exchange or on the marketplace, you have until 4.15 to do that. And, and there is a box in the enrollment at some point during the enrollment that your your client would check to indicate that they had difficulty in enrolling for whatever reason, um, and it's done on the honor system. So again, if you have somebody that comes into your office and, you know, for whatever reason, um, and they're not really asking, but for whatever reason had difficulty signing up and they need to go through the exchange, just log in as you normally do, create the account, and proceed through the enrollment. Um, one of my agent partners did mention that during the enrollment now, um, the subsidy determination doesn't necessarily pop up like it did before, but if you continue on through where you choose a plan, you'll then see the subsidy. Now, again, that was the beginning of this week. I don't know if that was a glitch and it's been fixed or if that's the new format. So, again, just kind of answer the questions that are asked when going through the enrollment. Um, after 4.15, supposedly, um, you are locked out of enrolling your, your clients until the next annual election period. And that right now is set for November 15th through February 15th. Um, so unless there's a qualifying event that would throw you into a special election period, I'm sorry, your clients into a special election period, then you're going to be shut out. So. Um, just be mindful that there's still a little bit of, of interpretation being done and um, logistics being done with the carriers on how to account for a qualifying event, but it does say that you have 60 days, within 60 days of a qualifying event before or after to enroll. Um, so again, just be mindful of that the proof is in the pudding when we, when we get to that point, but um, I'm just sharing what information I have at this point. Now, interestingly enough, um, off-exchange enrollment for some carriers was also extended. And that doesn't necessarily surprise any of us, but what's interesting about it is that instead of, um, you know, before when they extended the January 1st enrollment date um, and all carriers kind of followed suit, each carrier seems to be dealing with an extension on the enrollment in the individual market a little bit differently. So what I know at this point is you can still apply for a 5-1 effective date off exchange um, anywhere from April 1st through 415. And that is true for Highmark Blue Shield Central, um, Western Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, Capital Blue Cross, and Blue Cross of Northeastern PA, kind of. And the reason I put kind of on Blue Cross of Northeastern PA is because the only way they're going to accept somebody from now until the 15th 
um, is if they show a, for a 5-1 effective date outside of a, and I'm qualifying this, um, outside of, an, of a qualifying event is if you can prove that there were problems with the BC MEPA website and they've already indicated there were no, no problems with the site. So yes, they are saying that they're extending for a 5-1 effective date up to 415, but somebody's going to have a very difficult time proving that, that there were difficulties with the site because there were none. So for each of these carriers, Highmark Blue Shield um, and Western Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield and NEPA, there are special, special election forms, and I'll sh I'm going to show you those in a few minutes. Capital Blue Cross does not have a special election form, so if you have somebody that wants a 5-1, um, get us the paper app by 415, and that's true, again, of Highmark and Western Highmark. Um, Aetna has... Um, extended their enrollment for off exchange they will uh, keep they will receive paper applications through April 7th uh, and they'll be provided a 5-1 effective date but the application would have had to have been signed and dated um, 331 or prior and then paper applications received after April 7th will be reviewed to confirm a qualifying event and they will have to to verify what that and prove what qualifying event there was. So again, just be mindful of some of the um, details of the carriers because for after 4-7 for Aetna, it's going to be probably very difficult unless it's a true qualifying event to get in on this extension of enrollment. Um, 331 was the close for Independence Blue Cross and UPMC, and at this point it's still unclear for Geisinger and for Health America One, but you know, as time ticks by, we're pretty much assuming that there is no extension. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the extension forms. Um, this is Highmark form. They have a Highmark Blue Shield and a Highmark Health Insurance Company qualifying event uh, special enrollment period form. And if you have somebody in a paper app, for between 4-1 and 4-15 for a 5-1 effective date outside of the normal qualifying event, um, you know, essentially if they missed it, um, then you have to complete this marketplace uh, information and submit it with your paper application to URL. Um, so, you know, again, it, it gets a little convoluted, but this is the form and they, they are available on our website. They're all um, NEPA, this is their, their form. They're all pretty similar. Some carriers are asking for validation and proof of the qualifying event. Others are not. Um, so again, just be mindful of that. If you have questions specifically on one of your clients for a specific carrier, then please feel free to reach out to me or to your case manager and we can help you walk you through that. wanted to take um, a few minutes and also talk about qualifying events. So the normal qualifying event examples are, you know, if you get married, you have a baby, you adopt a child, um, you're moving outside your insurer's coverage area, you lose other health coverage due to losing job-based employer coverage, divorce, end of an, of an individual policy plan year in 2014, such as, you know, some of the carriers are, are experiencing. Um, expiration of COBRA. Uh, so these are the lists. But there is now, and I'll go to my, my slides again so you can see this. Um, you know, oops. Okay. Oops. Boy, I'm having problems today. <laughs> Extension of enrollment qualifying events. And then there's also complex case and limited circumstances special election period. And I, you know, with my own humor, say, let's roll the tape, Peter. So we're going to go to that and show you what some of those complex situations are. Um, some of them are you've had, you face serious medical condition or natural disaster that kept you from enrolling, um, hospitalization, temporary cognitive disability. <laughs> I guess we could all be guilty of that. 
um, natural disaster, a planned marketplace systems outage, um, also misinformation or misenrollment area error. Excuse me, your application may have been rejected by the insurance company system. Uh, systems errors, display errors on healthcare.gov. Um, you know, so there's a whole litany of this information uh, at these complex cases, and they are available on our um, our on our website. Additionally. On our website, under by CMS areas, and it takes you through uh, reportable changes, such as um, you know, there's a new person to be added to the application. You relocate. Um, you you get married. So your your change in tax filing status or household composition changes. So that, again, there's reportable changes, and it the PowerPoint takes you through how to report that life change on the FFM because remember anything generated directly through the FFM all of these reported changes have to go through the FFM so there's a list that you'll get to um, you know again it's 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 going to prompt you through the changes but this information should hopefully be helpful to you and uh, let's see. Let's go back here so those, we've addressed the complex case, limited circumstances, uh, special election periods. And, and also keep in mind, these are all things, you know, it's, it's a whole new set of questions and a whole new set of rules that we're getting into now since we had a, at least a soft close of the marketplace, both on and off. So, uh, you know, just any questions, just ask us because, you know, we're still trying to figure all of this out as well. Um, you know, now that we're in phase 1.2 of enrollment. So we still have no, no clue really, no details written about the extension of the health plan. This is not the enrollment extension. This is the extension of if you like your plan, you can keep it. So, um, you know, as I get more information in, both for group health plans and individual health plans, I will absolutely let you know. Um, what's going on, but it does seem that carriers are really contemplating uh, some sort of um, provision for allowing a non-PPACA plan to stay on the books for X amount of time. And again, once I get that information, I will get that over to you. Um, I just, just to back up one little second, um, for the carriers that are offering this enrollment extension, or moving forward through a valid qualifying event. Um, at this point, Capital Blue Cross does not have a special election form. Highmark Blue Shield and Western Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield, they do have a special election form. Um, again, Health America, Geisinger, that's unclear. Aetna um, does not have a special election form. And then we looked at NEPA's special election form. At this point, UPMC, and Independence Blue Cross for out, you know, a normal qualifying event have not released a special election form either. Ah, so hopefully that's not way too confusing to everybody. Um, it is, it is pretty confusing to all of us. So again, if you have questions, just reach out to you, to me, or to your case manager. So I did have a question about uh, the tax. Uh, the household size changing, and we did go over that. That was the only submitted question for today pre-webinar. Um, so at this point, I'm going to open it up for the open forum uh, for all of your questions, and we'll go through those. Oh, my goodness. OK. Uh, well, Jules wants to know, what will the next Powerball number be? And boy, Jules, if I knew that, I'd I'd probably share it with a few of you. <laughs> and Jules said, can he handle the entire process over the phone with a client? And yes, you can. Um, if you call the healthcare.gov number and conference call your with your client and the health insurance marketplace worker, you can handle the enrollment. But um, I've found it now to be a lot easier to just do everything online. 
And Dana says, Hi Mark's catastrophic plans, which have been extended to 531, do not meet the MEC requirement. Will those people still be eligible for a qualifying event? Um, Dana, I'm not aware of that, so let me check on that. I had not heard that. Um, so I'm not sure if, if you're talking about the special care program versus the catastrophic, but I'll reach out to you um, after the program, and then, of course, with all, everyone else, I'll follow up um, next week on, on the webinar. Um, James says, does the, special, does the policy renewal date qualify as a special election period? And James, uh, for the most part, it does if, if you have somebody currently on a non-PPACA individual health plan and at some point, you know, say 7-1, they come up for renewal, and that plan is, that non-PPACA plan is not offered to them as an option and only a PPACA option is offered, then that is a special election period that would create a special election period. So the answer is yes. Um, who is responsible? To report changes to the marketplace, the member or the agent broker, and um, Charlie, that that basically is entirely up. It, it it's always on the the clients. Um, it's their responsibility to report any changes to an insurance carrier. Um, most of your clients, I would imagine, would contact you. So. Um, Elmer says, "What if an employer wants to dump the group plan, assuming under 50?" <coughs> Pardon me, 50 employees. Can we do the enrollments online? Yeah, if if your clients currently have a group health plan, and that employer dissolves that group coverage sometime during 2014, that is also a qualifying event, and you can enroll um, people on or off exchange. Uh, it's a qualifying event, and just. Just so you know, um, I have been getting a lot of questions um, because there's some sort of misunderstanding out there that only the exchange programs, the FFM, has shut down for 331, but that's not the case. All enrollments outside of this enrollment extension um, for individual plans, it, it is closing, and unless there's a qualifying event, both on and off exchange, if they don't have insurance and there's no qualifying event, they have to wait till the next annual election period. Um, so to Elmer's question, uh, yeah, you can enroll employees on or off exchange if the employer is dissolving group coverage because it is a qualifying event. Ken says, is one eligible for the subsidy if COBRA is an option? Must one run out of COBRA first time? And outside of the enrollment period, if somebody is leaving coverage, group coverage and is offered COBRA at that point, they have the opportunity to choose COBRA or choose to enroll on or off the marketplace outside of COBRA. If they choose COBRA and decide a month down the line that they don't like it, that's not a qualifying event. But at the point that COBRA becomes available, that's the qualifying event. They just have to make a decision. And Dana says uh, special the Mark Blue Shield or High Mark Blue Cross Blue Shield is terminating 531. Um, you know, again, it, I've not heard that that's going to be extended. Besides that, they're going to extend it through 2014. Then that person's not subject to any penalty if they keep it. But if it's offered for an extension and it's outside of the enrollment period, they can't terminate it voluntarily and say, oh, I'm going to go see if I can get an, uh, uh, a subsidy or a better plan. Um, so that's going to be kind of key to watch. Jules says, will people who can keep their grandfather plans be eventually required to change to a metal plan? Oh, absolutely, Jules. It's just when is that going to happen? Um, you know, what's the D date? And, and at this point, we don't know because we don't know what carriers are extending programs and, and if they are, what programs are being extended and for how long. So, And Ken says, can one voluntarily drop other coverage and enroll and get a subsidy? No. Voluntarily terminating group or individual coverage is not a qualifying event. Sue says, if someone later on down the line cannot afford 
the health coverage because of some reason, what do we do? If they can't afford it, um, you know, then then it's going to go into, you know, what type of coverage is it? And, you know, if they decide, if it's an individual plan and they decide they can't afford it um, and it's not due to an income change, then they can terminate it. And again, if they terminate, if they initiated the app on the FFM, they terminate it through there. If it's through directly through uh, you and the carrier, <clears throat> then you would follow the normal termination rules. But that's not a qualifying event unless it's a change in income. And Ann says, what do we need to do to prove they've lost coverage from a group employer or COBRA to enroll them with a qualifying event? Credible coverage letter. Um, well, the jury's still out on that. Um, yes, the certificate of credible coverage would, would more than likely be required. But again, as we move through all of these events, we're going to have to um, rely on the carriers. And then, of course, I'll, I'll share with you. Um, what the requirements really are. I know that Blue Cross of Northeastern PA is, is requiring a certificate of coverage. Um, however, we don't know if a letter from the employer stating they're going to terminate their plan or from the carrier is going to be sufficient either. So we're going to work through these issues as they come up. Um, but for those requiring proof, we're going to have to figure out um, you know, what that really means. Elmer says that he has a client that started the application on Monday and has the approved eligibility letter, but the, re um, the resume enrollment area is all grayed out. Everything is locked. Where is the box to get this moving forward, or do I need to call the marketplace to get an override to finish this up? Well, I honestly don't know because I've not done any of these enrollments after the fact. Um, so I tell you what, Elmer, I will give you a call. And maybe we can share our screens and we can, um, so I will give you a call. And at that point, or at this point, that seems to be all of the questions, unless anybody else has any questions. As always, um, this is so important. I want to thank you all for your business. Um, you guys, um, your kind words, and I, I can tell you that you know, I've always said that our success is your success, and your success is my success. And I, I truly, truly appreciate the partnership and all of the support and all of your business that you've submitted. So thank you all so much. Um, next webinar is Thursday, April 10th at 9.30. And I look forward to talking with all of you again. Thanks again for joining, and have a great day and a great weekend. Bye-bye.